Greetings, dear colleagues. We are happy to present our international experimental study of the reconstruction of the compound bow of Sintashta culture of Bronze Age of the Southern Ural. We are grateful for the opportunity to implement the project to the grand program of the Exarch twinning program. The Sintashta archaeological culture dates to the 21 to 18 centuries BC. Distinctive features of the culture are high militarism and the existence of large fortified settlements, of which 23 are known. The world's oldest chariot complex was found in the burials of Sintashta culture. Consisting of the weapons of the warrior uh, charioteer, a bow, axe, spear and the chariot itself with the necessary chickpeas elements, burials of the horses and rich animal sacrifices. Numerous finds of arrowheads and unusual horn details of compound bows were found in three Sintashta burial complexes, Kamene Ambar 5, Stipnoe M and Sonsa 2. These finds illustrate the high importance of the bow among the warriors of this society. The authors of this discovery of bows and bow parts created graphic reconstruction of possible design. However, there was no practical reconstruction that could, could uh, confirm the uh, significance of this technological solution. In January 2019, our team won a research twinning program grant from the Exarch and began to develop a completely authentic reconstruction of the Sintashta type bow. The practical experimental experience of the reconstruction bow from such an ancient era is unique. This uh, initiative is the first attempt of the scientific reconstruction uh, of the bow associated with the Sintashta culture. This type of bow appears to be potentially very important. Science it provides information about the process of appearance and evolution of complex bows of the step breathers and elucidate the special type of combat based on mobility and long distance in this culture. In the beginning, the study investigated the wide context of finds of bows of the Neolithic and Bronze Age in Eurasia. Archaeological data indicated the development of the self-bow in Mesolithic times. Bronze Age cultures of the steppes like Yama, Catacomb, Andronovo, Abasevo and Sindasta deployed a slow but distinct technological bow evolution of self-bows in a parallel perspective with Western, Central and Eastern Europe. In this context, we can see the first archaeological findings of a new type of bow that emerged in the steps, the composite bow, which was shorter and more powerful than the regular self bow. In this perspective, the directive team managed to record the most important relevant archaeological findings, fragments and depictions. A vast catalogue of 47 cases of self composite, laminate bows, or even potential cases of composite bows were recorded which helped the directive team to understand the technological context of the bow technology in Eurasia. The vast open landscapes of the Transural Steppe and the Endless Forest Steppe determined the use of a wide set of long-ranged weapons, mainly represented by the bows and arrow. The high importance of bows is traditionally known for a number of cultures of the South Ural and transurals of the Bronze Age. A complex of horn parts from Barrow 4, Pit 13 of the Stepnoe burial ground was chosen as an object for reconstruction, since it seems to be the most structurally interesting and integral. The finds were located in one of the largest pits of the multigrave mound. Numerous remains of sacrificial animals including a wall skeleton of a dog lay of the ceiling of the burial chamber. In ancient times, the pit was roped. In the burial, parallel to it, uh, were two disturbed bones of a male and a female. 
Despite the looting, a rich funeral inventory was preserved in the pit. Four ornamented vessels, a horn cheek pieces detailed with the spikes, a wooden object with the metal clips, stone tools, 13 arrowheads made of stone, bone and horn, animal bones, and a piece of silver jewelry. The horn parts of the bow were located in different parts of the pit, which can be both a consequence of the looting and a feature of the funeral ritual. Examples of ritual damage the weapon in Sintashta funeral practice as well known. The first item is an object of elaborate shape. It has a rectangular base and massive S-shaped asymmetric hook at its reverse side. This hook has a longitudinal groove channel. The second item is two tips of a bow limb made of elk teens. And third item has a rectangular base with three transversal arranged salient edges, which form two cavities. To unify the terminology and the convenience of the scientific description of the processes, we decided to use the following designations of bow details. The S-hook device as item A, the elk anther tips as item B, and the arrow rest as item C. Based on the archaeological evidence of the contemporary bow technology of the Eurasian Basin, and noting that the relevant Sindasta burials did not contain any evidence of rectangular or elongated horn antler remnants, the project team postulated that the bow should be a rare case of a hybrid self-bow that used additional pieces to strengthen its mechanics and functions at the higher possible level for the archer. Furthermore, the calculations of the possible maximum mass of an arrow with a flint tip of about 100 grains, an average length of 27 to 28 uh, inches, suggest a war bow of about 60 uh, of more uh, than 60 uh, pounds and of a long type. Taking uh, into account the rarity of this typology, which does not fit in any uh, other of the regular bow categories, which follows the terminology uh, used in the past, uh, the bow can be categorized with caution in the general term of compound bow. During the period of uh, June to September 2019, our working group in Russia, directed by the skilled master Mr. Klim Abramov, produced exact replicas of the antler parts of the bow based on the relevant burial findings. Three sets of uh, item A, item B and item C were reconstructed using elk antler and traditional techniques and tools. For the main procedure of the bow building, our team cooperated uh, with an experienced bowyer from Greece, Mr. Ioannis Bogoyanis, who had carried out the construction of the bow shafts and the assemblage of, and uh, adjustment of the different parts. Version 1 bow was constructed in the late May 2020 and followed to the relevant partners described by Bersenev, Epimakhov and Zdenovich. Junior. The reconstructed bow was made of elm wood that had been dried for 10 months. Item A was placed in the outer side of the top, top end of the bow uh, in the specially flat shaped surface of the bow shaft. Item B was adjusted in the lower end of the bow, ensuring a firm fastening of the bow string. As Bersenev, Hipemehov and Zdenovich have noted, the duality of fines and their location side by side is indirect evidence of this version. Item C was adjusted in the central part of the bow above the grip, resulting in the peculiar arrow rest. The final outcome was a bow of 182 centimeters in length and a 
72 pounds true weight. The boyer managed to tiller the bow. And then the bow was put into the first preliminary tests by shooting the experimentally reconstructed arrows in a draw length of 26. From mechanics perspective, items A and B offered an enhanced stif stiffness and did not allow the smooth bang of the limbs, while the extra mass of the item A caused significant imbalance. Soon, the experimental shots confirmed our fears, as ATM A provides significant vibrations and hand stocks. The bow broke above the base of upper limb. Version 2 bow followed the relevant patterns of uh, Zdanovich Jr. and was constructed in the first half of June 2020. The reconstructed bow was made of elm wood that had been dried for 10 months. Zdenovich Jr. maintains ATM A in the upper limb but on the inner side of the bow. His innovative proposal is that ITM C could have a different usage where it worked were performing more like a string notches and that it was placed in the end of the lower limb. Furthermore, he suggests that the waff served to fasten one end of the string tightly and the S-shaped top end was used to put the bow in the run position with the detached string. All the items were glued in the bow shaft with the leather glue and wrapped with deer sinew which was dipped in the same glue. The final outcome was a bow of 180 centimeters in length and a 65 pound draw weight. The directive team made an amendment uh, to Zdenovich Jr. version and placed ATMA in the outer side of the bow. Otherwise, the bow would not have performed safely. There was critical danger to, under significant pressure, the item could be detached from the bow shaft and cause severe injury. The tiller was adjusted and the bow was put to the test. The bow unexpectedly performed comparatively satisfactorily during the experimental shots, as a placement of item C in the bottom end of the bow provided more elasticity and bouncing efficiency uh, on the lower half of the bow. While drawn, the bow was forming an asymmetrical bending due to the stiffness of the top end of the upper limb caused by item A. During the shots, the vibrations were considerably less this time, but still the mass of item A caused the bow to lean forward at the follow through procedure. Version number 3 was constructed in June 2020 and was inspired by the relevant work of Paulson. The bow was modified accordingly with input from the directive team. This modified version involved placing the item A in the outer side of the upper half of the upper limb so that we would test the possibility that this device would perform as a peculiar string hanger when the bow would be hung from the archer's back. The upper tip of the bow was reinforced with a small deer antler tip. The item B was adjusted in the lower end of the bow, ensuring a firm fastening of the bow string, while the item C was adjusted in the central part of the bow above the grip, performing as a peculiar arrow rest. At this point, we investigated if a device, like item A, could be adjusted on the bow and how this would affect the bow mechanics. The final outcome was a bow of 182 cm in length and 70 pounds draw weight. The experimental shots soon produced obvious difficulties, as the item A operated as a splint for the small section of the bow and prohibited the proper bending of the limb. When drawn, the bow was forming an uneven curvature on the upper half, 
and highlighted the fact that this modification worked against the bow mechanics. During the experimental shots, the vibrations were sufficient enough to destabilize the bow at the follow-through procedure and sufficiently interfered with the normal operation of the bow. After the practical functional failure of the version number one, the team proceeded to develop a new theory which was an upgraded modification of the version number one. The bow was constructed and tested in August 2020. Due to the fact that the item A provided extra mass on the end of the limb, causing significant imbalance and vibrations, the Boyer proposed the diametrically opposite placement of the item A and B in the construction of asymmetrical limbs. This time, the item A was now placed in the end of the lower limb, while the lower limb was made slightly shorter in length. The latter was done to achieve the maximum possible stiffness and to avoid the possibilities of vibrations. The item B was placed in the top end of the upper limb, which had the regular length from the previous versions. The final outcome was a bow of 187 cm in length and 64 pounds uh, draw weight. The results through the experimental shots were quite satisfactory. When drawn, the asymmetric bow formed a smooth proportional curvature. During the experimental shots, the bow showed a remarkable mechanical output performing under constant functional repeatability. The item A enhanced the stability of the bow as it moved the center of the mass of the bow to a lower position. The vibrations and hand shocks presented in previous versions were quite limited and the follow-through movement was more balanced. The item C also performed quite well as an arrow rest. The choice of the placement of the arrow in the three form laths of the item offered three different scaled levels which affected the range of the shot in an absolutely effective way. When the arrow was placed in the lower lath, it was connected with the shot of a close range, for example less than 20 meters. Putting the arrow in the upper laths is connected with targets that were at the long range and required a lifting incline for the arrow. The experimental shots using all uh, the different levels proved the potentially functional use of the item in this way. The conducted research offered a multidimensional approach on the unknown Sindasta bow technology. The reconstruction perspective of this research centered around the willingness to develop the existing theoretical framework and to submit additional knowledge and practical information. We considered the items as potential functional equipment pieces of a bow. Thus, the next step was to follow the experimental reconstructions and shooting tests to research the mechanics and performance outputs of the bow under different assembled combinations. As been described before, only the version 4 of the bow provided prospects of functionality. During the experimental tests, the version 4 proved a decent performance and a satisfactory repetitive stability. The item C practically performed as a simplified mechanical innovation as it offered a critical benefit in shooting at ranges at scale distances. It therefore acted as a modern shooting diopter, which had to be adjusted according to its shooting distance. On the other hand, the item A had a potential dual use. Firstly, it provided an additional small extra weight and mass to the lower limb of the bow, so that the center of the mass of the bow would go in a lower height. This, of course, was enhanced uh, by the fact that the lower limb was unequal than the upper one and became more stiff, resulting that the bow achieved increased stabilization and was balanced in comparison with the previous three versions. Secondly, the item A, with its special characteristics, uh, was always performing as a device for easy attachment and removing of the loop of the string of the bow. The bow had the string fastened in the upper end of the lip at an easily detachable point on the other side thus helping the warrior to use the bow in a more flexible way during fighting. 
The dual uses of the item A were indirectly associated with the theory of the extensive use of the war chariots by the Sindasta warriors. The chariot warfare requires constant motion, mobile conflicts, and a warrior that can easily adopt different styles of fighting during the battle. It is possible that the warrior would need to easily change weapons in the battlefield. Thus, a strong war bow that could be easily braced and unbraced would be a very good selection for his armory. Furthermore, the fact that the lower limb is unequal and shorter than the upper one may be an indication of a preliminary realization of one of the basic principles of the war chariotry, the need of small-sized bows. The bow limbs must be short enough and able to perform in a narrow space, as otherwise they will uh, interfere with the chariot's box. Placing the bow in the context of material culture and taking into account the current research is likely that we have evidence of the very unique case of the bow, which was part of an evolutionary process that took place in Eurasia during the Bronze Age. The fearsome warriors of the Sintashta culture, along with their experimentation in using the chariot for warlike reasons probably also experimented with the weapons. The Sintashta bow could have been a special case of bow type, beyond the framework of the common typology and must be always considered within the context. The Sintashta era created cultural stereotypes of the steppe population of northern Eurasia, some of which existed for millennia. There is no doubt that they had a great influence in the type of military affairs of that time, where speed and mobility were important. The horse and the bow were the warrior's main allies. In the Sintashta era, a warrior and a chariot would have struck his enemy with a bow. The authors would like to thank Elena Antoniado and Maria Semyan for the encouragement they provided through the duration of this project. Dear colleagues, thank you very much for the attention.